Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to see if I can have ChatGPT create a financial model, valuation model of Apple. And I'm gonna ask it a few questions and you'll notice that I have to pry it and add additional information to it to build the best model. So let's see what happens. So the first question I ask, I just a broad question, create a financial valuation of Apple. And it gives me a very generic answer. You know, it is not possible for me to create a financial valuation of a specific, um, um, companies such as Apple as a value of the company can fluctuate, fluctuate based on a variety of factors. Then I asked it, create a discounted cash flow model of Apple. And then it gives me the different steps going down through the DCF model. Project the future cash flows, estimate the discount rate, the cash flows, discount those cash flows by the discount to get the present values and sum those up. Now I want to ask it, let's, okay, let's just add, what are some initial inputs for the variables? And I ask it, can we use 2021? And it takes a while for it to figure this out. You'll notice it takes some time. And again, it gives me a, a broad response of steps, which is, these are the correct steps. You know, you project the future cash flows, you estimate the discount rate, you discount those future cash flows, and you sum the present values. But it didn't actually put in the 21 data, 2021 data. So I just asked, okay, can you code this in Python? And what's pretty cool is, at first it says no, but yes, it can provide an example. And it provides a pretty simple example of a discount model that is accurate, actually. Now I wanna ask that can you use 2021 Apple data? I try to add, give a more concise question with more detail um, as initial input. So it says it is possible but again, it gives me a generic answer to use 21 Apple. It gives me where I can find all this information. And now I wanna ask, okay, how about just give me Apple 2021 cash flows. And now I finally figure out, okay, I don't have access to the most recent recent cash flows. Cutoff date is 2021. So now I, I go back one, let's use 2020 variables. And again, it tells me what I need to do. I need to get, gather financial data, project the future cash flows do all that, that's great. What I really wanna do is build it out in Python for me. And I ask, okay, could, can it code this in Python starting with 2020 data? Let's see what happens now. It takes a while and it says sure. And it actually does it. So it's now it's taking 2020 data and it's projecting it out five years. I didn't even tell it to do that. It's just doing that. With the task rate, it's a very simple model of just projecting out to get some type of cash, cash flow using net income. And then we can get the intrinsic value. So it's a very simple discount of cash flow model, which is fine, but you know, as analysts, as, you know, and especially people that have done the CFA, there are different ways of calculating free cash flow, um, free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to equity. And there are ways that are more accurate than others. So a lot of people do just net income, which is not the correct way to do it. You can't just project net income out into the future and discount those income variables. You have to look at and subtract out. Um, you have to look at the EBIT margin. You need to subtract out fixed capital and working capital. So I wanted to see, so I'm going back and forth to some other questions I could ask. So could we use a cash model that projects revenue growth out? So what I wanna do is I wanna use revenue growth as our initial input and project that out and use industry averages. And it actually does. It comes back to me and it does find industry averages for us which is cool. And I ask, can we use a discount of cash flow model that utilizes revenue? And working capital and EBIT margin, operating a margin and CapEx margin as initial inputs. And so it builds another DCF model here for us using those as the variables that we can control. So you notice we got the revenue, we got the operating margins, and yes, when you, and the tax rate, and we can calculate cash flows from that, those inputs. It's a very broad way of calculating cash flows as well. Soon I'm gonna start asking it, okay, can you build out a f free cash flow to the firm model using net income? And then after that, I wanna see if we can do it, do it with EBIT.
So here we go. So I'm asking, can you compare the free cash flow to the firm approach versus the free cash flow to equity approach? So I just want to see if they can actually understand the difference between these two approaches of valuing a company, two cash flow approaches. And it actually responds with a correct answer of yes, you can. It, yes, we can compare those. And now I want to know, does it know the actual, can we do this in Python? And I also want to know if it actually knows the equation. So this is a free cash flow to equity model, which is not, which is correct, but not entirely what I wanted to do. So after this, I ask it, can you give me the equation to the free cash flow to firm model and free cash flow to equity model? So I just stop it. Let's use, let's start build, let's build a model, free cash flow model to the firm starting. Let's see. Yeah, what is the free cash flow firm equations? I want to see if it actually picked this up. And I'm sure you can even do a Google search and this should be able to project this out. So yeah, so, so now it's using net income as a starting point, which is fine. Now, yeah, can we start having find free cash for the firm starting with EBIT? And yes, you can using that approach. So you're gonna get an EBIT margin here. Yeah, yeah, and this is correct. So it's not like it's EBIT, depreciation, change in working capital, capital expenditure, tax rate, discount rate. So there's an issue here, so I had to refresh. And so yeah, it does know the EBIT formula um, using free cash flow to firm equation using EBIT, starting with EBIT, so, which is great. So can we find, now I wanna ask it, can we find, basically what I wanna do is can we forecast this out? in Python. And I want to tie it to revenue. And that will be my second question. I notice a lot of times it will give you the code, but it won't finish writing the code, so I have to have it continue, which is a little a little annoying, but that's okay. So I think at this point, I'm going to ask it to build a free cash out of the firm model that starts with projected sales growth. And then I'm gonna ask it, can it include incremental working capital, incremental fixed capital, and I want it all tied to sales. Yep. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm tying it to the sales. And so fixed capital, working capital is a percentage of sales. And it actually figures this out. Well, actually in this, in this code, it just projects it out. But what I want in the second question is, can you tie it to sales as a percentage? Yeah, can you tie each, variable, each of the variables to sales? And yes, it is possible to tie each variable. So in this example, so it actually figures that out automatically. That yeah, you can tie, EBIT is already tied to sales, but we can also tie fixed capital and working capital to sales as well as a multiple. As a percentage. So now I say, okay, thank you. Let's stick with this model. So now we actually have a model that we like. We like this free cash flow to the firm model that's with the variables of the inputs that we want. Now I want to see can we project this out 10 years and can we do this towards industry averages? So we'll start with the 2020 variables, whatever those margins are, those percentages are, and project them out 10 years towards their industry averages of 2020. So let's use 2020 as a starting point for each. <laughs> so it's this, this is taking me some time here to figure this out, the best question here to ask, but basically I'm asking, 
Okay, let's use 2020 data as the starting point for each of these margins, these percentages. And let's also use industry averages as the 2020 data because it gets a little mixed up here. But it wants, I want to just project out towards those industry averages. And eventually with the right question, it does figure that out. So it gives me the fixed capital, working capital, and it projects it out 10 years and it decreases it or increases it at a specific rate towards those industry averages. And that's basically it. So this is most of the data that we, th this is based on the model that we wanted and it works. And it's pretty cool actually. So I'm really excited about how this all turned out. It's pretty exciting what we can do with this as financial analysts and advisors. You can basically build out a model, program it in Python. Later, I think I wanna do some videos and maybe programming it in other types of languages like VBA where you can paste that into your VBA and next thing you know, you're using Excel to do this. And then also asking it to visualize the, the output of this. So visualize it in scatter plots, visualize, visualize the present value, um, and also maybe potentially increasing, adding another feature like a sensitivity analysis, which I have done already and you'll be surprised it does work. All right guys, so I hope you liked this video. I know it was a quick one. Um, everything was pretty fast. If you have any questions, just uh, put some comments, throw me some comments and uh, I'll, let you, I'll help you guys out. All right, later.